हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ग्रामा क्लास टूडेज टॉपिक इज काइंड ऑफ सेंटेंसेज वेल अ सेंटेंस इज अ वर्ड ओ अ ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट मेक्स अ कंप्लीट सेंस ओ एक्सप्रेस इज अ कंप्लीट आइडिया इन इंग्लिश देर आर फाइव काइंड ऑफ सेंटेंसेज अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर डिफरेंट फंक्शंस दीज फाइव काइंड ऑफ सेंटेंसेज आर द असर्टिव और डेक्लरेटिव सेंटेंस the imperative sentence the interrogative sentence the optative sentence and the exclamatory sentence first up the assertive or the declarative sentence as the name suggests an assertive sentence makes a statement or states a fact and it ends with a full stop the structure of the assertive sentence is the subject followed by the verb and then the other words now assertive or declarative sentences have two sub types the affirmative and the negative the affirmative sentence makes a positive statement whereas the negative sentence makes a negative statement with the use of no not or never for example i go to school is an assertive sentence of the affirmative type it's a positive statement and the pattern of the sentence is the subject plus the verb followed by the other words but the sentence i do not go to school or i never go to school is an example of the assertive sentence of the negative type it's a negative statement with the use of never or not so we understand that an assertive sentence makes a statement positive or negative and has the structure of subject plus verb plus other words up next we have the interrogative sentence to interrogate or interrogation means asking questions so an interrogative sentence expresses a question and it ends with a question mark In English grammar there are two types of interrogative sentences the open question and the closed question the open question cannot be answered in yes or no and it starts with a question word an open question may start with a question word or a wh word such as what when where how who which whose etc The structure or pattern of the open question is wh word followed by the auxiliary verb and then the subject followed by the principal verb. So we understand that an open question always starts with a wh word and then comes the helping verb and then the subject of the sentence and finally the principal verb and other words. Moreover an open question cannot be answered in yes or no for example where do you live as you can see this open interrogative sentence starts with the wh word where then comes the helping verb do and then the subject you followed by the principal verb live to answer this question you have to mention the name of the place where you live you cannot answer this question in yes or no what are you doing this too is an open question because it starts with the question word what followed by the helping verb are and then the subject you followed by the principal verb in the fourth form doing and this question is also not answerable in yes or no but remember in an open question it's extremely important to put the helping verb or the auxiliary verb immediately after the wh word for example where you live is not a correct sentence the helping verb do must be used immediately after the question word where so make no mistake in an interrogative sentence the auxiliary verb always comes before the subject but unlike the open question the closed question can be answered in yes or no and remember a closed question always starts with some auxiliary verb or helping verb and not a question word or a wh word 
द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द क्लोज क्वेश्चन इज ऑक्सिलरी वर्ब प्लस सब्जेक्ट प्लस वर्ब प्लस अदर वर्ड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल डू यू लिव इन इंडिया इज अ क्लोज क्वेश्चन एज यू कैन सी इट स्टार्ट विद द ऑक्सिलरी वर्ब डू बिफोर द सब्जेक्ट यू फॉलोड बाई द प्रिंसिपल वर्ब लीव एंड देन द अदर वर्ड्स इन इंडिया moreover this question can be answered in yes or no if you live in india you answer in yes if you do not live in india you say no and mind you there is no wh word or question word at the start of this interrogative sentence similarly are you sick is also a closed question it's answerable in yes or no and doesn't start with a question word or a wh word Now what about the imperative sentence An imperative sentence expresses a command or a request or a prohibition or advice or a suggestion etc In an imperative sentence the subject is always the second person pronoun you but it's in the understood form it's not used in the sentence So an imperative sentence starts with the first form of the verb which is followed by the other words A negative imperative sentence starts with do not or never followed by the first form of the verb and then the other words in the sentence. An imperative sentence ends with a full stop or a period. Now see some examples of imperative sentences on your screen. Shut the door is an imperative sentence. It starts with the first form of the verb shut and expresses an instruction. Do not make a noise. is also a negative imperative sentence it starts with do not followed by the first form of the verb make it expresses a prohibition and then please keep quiet is also an imperative sentence expressing a request so it begins with the word please before the first form of the verb keep in an imperative sentence sometimes do is used before the first form of the verb for emphasis For example in the sentence do be careful there is strong or emphatic advice never tell a lie is a negative imperative sentence and as i said earlier it starts with never followed by the first form of the verb tell but remember though all these imperative sentences start with the first form of the verb the subjects in all these sentences is the second person pronoun you which is in the understood form then the optative sentence expresses a prayer or a blessing or a curse or a wish it ends with an exclamation mark remember the structure of the optative sentence the modal verb may followed by the subject plus the first form of the principal verb and then the other words so we understand that an optative sentence starts with the modal verb may For example may you live long this sentence expresses a blessing or a prayer but sometimes the modal may is not used at the start of the optative sentence it's hidden or understood for example may god bless you becomes god bless you and finally we have the exclamatory sentence as the name suggests it expresses an exclamation exclamation means uttering a strong or sudden feeling or emotion of the mind in other words the exclamatory sentence may indicate a strong and sudden emotion or feeling such as anger surprise horror sorrow joy disgust etc the exclamatory sentence ends with an exclamation mark there are two structures of exclamatory sentences number 1 how plus adjective or adverb plus subject plus verb number 2 what plus noun phrase plus subject plus verb so we learn that exclamatory sentences begin with how or what how is followed by an adjective or adverb before the subject and what is followed by a noun or a noun phrase before the subject Now see some examples of exclamatory sentences on your screen. What a lovely dress it is. This exclamatory sentence expresses a strong admiration for the dress. It starts with what followed by the noun phrase a lovely dress 
and then the subject it and the verb is in the second exclamatory sentence how cruel he was there is a strong disapproval or criticism of the person it starts with how followed by the adjective cruel and then the subject he and the verb was but interestingly sometimes an exclamatory sentence may have the structure of an assertive sentence or an imperative sentence for instance the baby is so cute there is an exclamation of admiration here in this sentence but it has the structure of an assertive sentence similarly get out has the structure of an imperative sentence but it denotes an exclamation of anger so it's an exclamatory sentence the next sentence oh that i had wings expresses a strong wish or desire so it's also an exclamatory sentence so that's the end of today's class i hope you liked the video please be sure to like comment share and subscribe to my channel for more grammar videos thank you so much for watching the video until the end